Canaptic spiders and scarabs, the two most versatile units in the index. Time for some Necron tactics. Next speaking, and welcome to this video. Right, time for some more Necron tactics. Before we get into that though, if you would like to keep up to date with all of the wonders of Warhammer 40K, then please give me a sub and hit the bell button so you don't miss an upload. Right, so in this video, we're gonna have a look at the spiders and the scarabs. Uh, now this is quite an interesting combo, and one reason why I put them together uh, in one video is because in previous editions, these two units have worked really, really well together. What's commonly known as the Scarab Farm. You summoned me, my master? Yes, Overlord, I did. I hear you did well in your battle against the Blood Angels recently. We slaughtered them all. Excellent. That is exactly what I like to hear. But I have a new mission for you, Overlord. I want you to take my place. Take your place? How? I want you to take my Scarab Farm into battle. Now, I've been playing the Scarab Farm for many years in many different editions. Uh, I own 63 Scarab bases. Actually, I own 20 Games Workshop Scarab bases and the rest are all made from green stuff. I've got videos in the archives, I'll link them up about me making green stuff scarabs. Now, I've been playing these units for quite some time and I feel I'm pretty experienced with them. Uh, now, in particular, uh, with the Scarab farm, basically, um, over the years, the incarnation of it has changed quite a bit. At one point, the Tomb Spider was able to generate a scarab um, onto his unit and make up a unit of scarabs and spiders. And then they took that away and then you had like a separate unit of scarabs and then the Tomb Spider was able to uh, generate scarabs onto that separate unit. Um, and uh, this was quite, quite a clever idea uh, and it worked really well for 7th edition uh, with the Canaptic Harvest where obviously the spider was able to give RP to those scarabs. Uh, so it's always been a doable force. Uh, more so in 6th edition when the Scarab Swarm were fearless um, and the fearless rule changed so that basically if you were fearless you didn't run away. Now back in 5th edition you took extra wounds. So from 5th edition I'd say to 6th edition that's when the Scarab farm really was probably at its heyday. Um, but uh, it dropped us slightly in 7th edition down to the Decurion basically. Um, and now what about 8th edition? <laughs> Sitting Bull, there you are. I have had some orders from Imatek, the Stormlord. You and I are going to go into battle. Well, the rules now, um, to be fair, aren't very good. Not for uh, the combination of the two units together. So the way it works, basically, you've got a little bubble where the spider is able to put a brand new Scarab Swarm onto a Scarab unit but only to the starting uh, amount. So in other words, if no one shoots any scarabs and your scarabs are there for say turn one or two and you'd lose nothing, you can't generate more scarabs. It's only after you've taken losses. Now if somebody is shooting at your scarabs because of the six plus save only that they have, the chances are that unit will be wiped out anyway. So you're not gonna really be able to farm very well. Um, not only that, farming has now become quite dangerous. So every time you produce a Scarab Swarm, you roll a dice. Now on a one, uh, that spider takes D3 mortal wounds. That is nasty. The spider has four wounds, um, but even so, it, it's pretty nasty. And if you're anything like me, I always roll a one when I'm uh, doing the Scarab Farm. Unfortunately, uh, it isn't really that viable. It's still doable, but you can't get the most out of it. However, uh, both of the units as individual units, the Scarabs and also the Spider, are actually pretty versatile units. Uh, so let's have a look first at the Scarabs and uh, see how we're gonna use them. Okay, so first let's have a look at the stats. Uh, so movement wise, they move 10 inches, which is pretty decent. Not quite as, as good as they used to be, which was 12 inches, but still 10 inches 
is a pretty nice movement. Uh, now weapon skill wise they uh, hit on threes uh, which is a lot better than they were because it used to be fours. Uh, however on the charge it's four attacks where it used to be five so you've got a slight drop off uh, in attacks. Now one key thing here is the toughness. So toughness three um, but there's no instant death rule. Uh, so you can't be wiped out as a base, so you've got to get through those three wounds that they have. Uh, draw back, of course, they're little bugs, but only a 6 plus save. So even with cover, you're not really going to get much of a save. Uh, having said that, you know, three wounds each, it's pretty decent. Uh, you will probably need a bigger unit size, uh, but a smaller unit size is definitely doable, and we'll talk about that more when we actually look at tactics for this particular unit. Now this is from the Imperium 2 index, in particular the Knights. Uh, so I'm just going to read this out to you. So, Super Heavy Walker. Uh, this model can fall back in the movement phase and still shoot and charge in the same turn. When this model falls back, it can move over enemy infantry models though it must end its move more than one inch away from enemy units. Okay, it can move over enemy infantry models. Scarab swarms are swarms, they're not infantry, so the key word is swarms. Now swarms uh, doesn't actually mean anything at the moment, probably in the future when we get a proper index or codex, um, it probably will mean something, but at the moment it doesn't really mean anything. Having said that, that Imperial Knight, who, that massive Imperial Knight, who would normally be able to walk over an infantry model if they want to come out of close combat, are unable to walk over a Scarab Swarm. They're scared of it. It's like the elephant and the mouse. So that is just something to bear in mind. Now, I'm not saying this is like a huge tactic, but it's definitely something to remember. Uh, if you do have a squad of Scarab Swarms, and it's surrounding a knight, and it, for some reason they survive, <laughs> unlikely, but if they do, that knight isn't going to be able to walk o over them and come out of the assault. It's going to lock that knight into the assault. So it's just something to remember, um, that they are swarms and not infantry. Okay, so the special rule for the scarabs uh, has definitely been nerfed as such from the previous uh, rules and it has to be. So previously they used to be able to wound anything um, on sixes uh, and they used to be able to glance anything on sixes. Now obviously where vehicles aren't vehicles anymore, they're just units, they have to sort of modify the rules. So the way it works now is basically as long as uh, the enemy that you're trying to attack has a higher toughness than you, you'll always wound it on fives. Uh, so, you know, strength three, doesn't matter on your toughness, you always wound on fives. Quite reasonable. Um, you know, you get a lot of attacks, you're going to do some damage. They're not beast in combat, but what they are is cheap. They come in at 13 points a base. Now you can have between three and nine in one unit. Personally, I'd love to have more than that, like a unit of 20, um, but nine is the maximum. Um, and compared to lots of other units in the index and maybe in other indexes, um, I would say they're cheap for what you get. You know, three wounded uh, swarms, which can move quite fast, be a good distraction, etc. So how are we actually going to use them? Right, uh, a lot of people have been um, contacting me uh, with the fact that they have the start collecting box set uh, where they have basically three scarab swarms. Um, and indeed, the, the one big thing about scarab swarms is you can't buy the model. You can't go into Games Workshop and say, um, I want a unit of scarab swarms. The only way to get scarab swarms is you get three scarab bases in a box of warriors. Now, we're going to be buying our warriors anyway, um, and that's how you accumulate your scarabs. But even so, I think that's not right. I think you should be able to go into Games Workshop and buy a box of scarab swarms. And that's another reason why I did my green stuff, uh, scarabs. Anyway, uh, most people have at least three to start with, maybe six by the time they bought a couple of boxes of warriors. And one of the key questions that I get asked is how do you use those three scarabs? Because they charge out forward and they get shot. I mean, it's only nine, nine wounds, doesn't really do anything. 
Um, so there is definitely a tactic to using just a small squad of three scarabs and this is it. So what you do is you play them incredibly defensively. So in deployment you want to deploy these three scarabs either totally behind a piece of terrain uh, or at least totally on a piece of terrain so you 100% get a cover save bar any weapons that deny cover uh, and then you want to place it close to an objective but not on an objective now you've got 10 inch movement so you want to be you know a reasonable distance away from the objective so that you're not threatening so now you're not going out you're not on an objective there's pretty much no reason for your enemy to target that small squad of scarab swarms however they will be targeting all of your other stuff like your wraiths etc which will be going uh, out attacking so you play them very very defensively and the way I would see scarabs, a small squad of scarabs, is if they earn me one objective point, uh, they're worth the point. So what you would do, once you've got that ideal opportunity uh, to go and get an objective, then head on out, get the objective, get your point. If your enemy shoots at them from then on and they die, well, they've done their job. For the points that you pay, um, I think that's, that's an acceptable trade. If you can get a couple of objective points from those scarabs, then excellent. Uh, so yeah, don't don't put them on the objective too early. Just wait until the opportunity is correct. And then the other thing you can do with them is use them as a little intercept unit. If you had that uh, small squad of scarabs in a piece of terrain, maybe just flanked to the side near an objective, but not on the objective. Um, and then you've got an, a unit coming in. Maybe they've deep striked in, or uh, we well, don't have deep strike anymore. But they've deployed in there. Um, maybe they've deployed on the objective. Well, you can now send in those scarabs and as long as the unit which you're attacking doesn't have the fly special rule if you can get those scarabs to survive one round of, of uh, assault now bearing in mind your scarabs will be assaulting first because you're being intercepting them assuming they foul all their charges um, and then you're going to stop them from shooting so they have you know if they want to move away from that assault with the scarabs they're not going to be able to shoot so I think they've definitely got potential as a small scarab swarm, but you have to be incredibly uh, defensive with them. If you start being aggressive, they won't do anything. And three scarab swarms, especially if you've taken a bit of shooting from them and you've got overwatch and stuff, um, you might be down to two bases by the time you assault. They're not really going to do anything. However, um, a big squad of scarabs will do something, assuming you can weather uh, the the shooting phase from your enemy. So with a bigger unit you definitely can be a lot more aggressive. You can uh, charge them forward. You still want to be mindful of terrain so if you can uh, hide behind terrain or get into terrain as you move down over the board then obviously that's that's better. Um, but yeah the, the scout swarms will definitely be a threat in a bigger squad. Uh, there will be lots of memories of scarab swarms in the past uh, just taking out t tanks and vehicles very, very easily. Um, you know, people will still be in that mindset. They see scarabs, they see the land raider, I think, oh my God, I've got to target them. Uh, it happens, mind games. Um, but yeah, you definitely have an opportunity with those scarabs. They, they don't have any RP, so you, you're free to move them wherever you like. You don't have to worry about resurrection orbs or anything like that. Um, and you can go out, you can be free, and you can distract. Um, and that's what I like about the Scarrow Swarms. They're a great distraction units. They're fast, good number of attacks, good number of wounds, um, and uh, a great distraction unit. So that's the Scarabs. Let's have a quick look at the Tomb Spider. At last, an opportunity. Now I have my chance. Okay, so this is a monstrous creature. Um, we don't have many monstrous creatures in our army, so that is always nice to have. Uh, now, stat-wise, it moves uh, six inches, so faster than our normal troops, uh, which is nice. Uh, not too much change from the previous edition. You get uh, one extra wound, and you get two extra attacks. Um, and uh, it's strength six, toughness six, like it's always been. It has a ballistic scale of four plus. Uh, now, the key thing with the Tomb Spider, as we said, uh, farming scarabs, it's doable, but not the best way to use them. So what is the best way? 
Well, we have some great options on the Tomb Spider. And the first one is uh, the Fabricator Claw. Uh, and this will regenerate D3 wounds per turn on a vehicle. Um, and that, of course, is on top of the Living Metal rule. So you'll be able to generate one wound back for Living Metal and then D3 wounds from the Spider. Uh, now it's quite short range, you've got to be quite close to your vehicle um, assuming you haven't uh, deployed from tactical deployment, say of a monolith, I mean if you've got the monolith just on the board you have your tomb spider behind it, that means you're guaranteed to get two wounds back every turn potentially four wounds back every turn and that's just from one spider. Now it's a very useful piece of war gear especially if you're going more tank orientated. So if you've got your ghost arcs and annihilation barges, your monoliths, your doomsday arcs, etc. Um, definitely consider tomb spiders as an option. So we've also got a gloom prism. This is our only uh, anti-psychic uh, defense. Uh, and basically you get to do a denial of which roll for every gloom prism uh, that you have on the table. So you have multiple Tomb Spiders, you get multiple Deny the Witch rolls. Um, I foresee this being quite prominent, especially in the top level games where I think there will be quite a good number of psychic powers around on the table. Um, and uh, again, it's just a really useful piece of war gear. It's quite cheap, it's only five points on the base of the spider, which is 76 points. Uh, so you're looking just under 100 points with a Fabricator Claw and the Gloom Prism, uh, pretty nice. Now you do have the option to put a gun on the Tomb Spider. In actual fact, you can put two guns on there, uh, the Particle Beamer, um, and they are three shots each, so you get six shots, gonna be hitting on fours, and their strength six. They do one, one damage um, and they have no AP. Reasonable, 10 points for that gun. Um, what I would suggest is if you're using power levels, the gun is definitely worth taking because of course you don't pay for your war gear. Um, in points games, I probably wouldn't necessarily take that gun. I would say it's probably best just to take the Gloom Prism uh, and the Fabricator Claw if you've got vehicles, definitely the Gloom Prism. Now in terms of use of the Tomb Spider, this is where it becomes a bit tricky. Um, it is the type of units that will be, get targeted quite quickly because it's a monstrous creature, no one really likes to see them. Um, and they're, you could almost say they're quite easy to take out. Uh, yeah, toughness 6, but it doesn't really mean much in 8th edition. Um, and the save, a 3 plus save, but only 4 wounds. So you could easily take out the spider probably in one round of shooting. So ideally if you can, uh, hide him either behind a monolith um, or behind terrain uh, if it's available. Um, but definitely um, a great unit to have, but as I said, very versatile, the Tomb Spider. And of course you do have the option to assault with the Tomb Spider, uh, possibly better to assault with that than maybe your warriors or your immortals because you want to hold them back to be able to shoot. So you can send in the Tomb Spider, again another nice intercept uh, unit. So that is um, some ideas on using scarabs and spiders. So I really hope they were useful to you. Uh, stay tuned for next Monday. And we'll have another video on how to win with Necrons. Beam me up.